right, so let's talk about everything you need to know as a beekeeper about mites. But first, make sure you stick around to the end because the most important tip is gonna be at the end after I teach you about mites. Okay, so first, what are mites? There are two kinds. There are tracheal mites and there are the varroa mites. Both mites are these little parasitic bugs that like to infest the bee and literally suck the life out of them. Uh, varroa mites like to attach their self on to the fat portion underneath a bee and then just suck out all of their nutrients and energy. And then tracheal mites, they will embed themselves in the esophagus of a bee. Um, both of these mites, they are known to spread lots of viruses like deformed wing virus. It's not good because when your bees get this, as the name says, your bees will start to form these deformed wings and they're not gonna be able to fly correctly. And pretty much at that point, once a virus starts spreading like that, it's not looking good for your colony. The varroa mite came from the Asian honeybee. So what we have here in America are mostly the Western honeybee. So the Western honeybee did not evolve with mites the same way that Asian honeybees did. So they have almost like no defense against these mites. They don't know how to get rid of them. They don't even notice that they're there in the hive. They have been breeding these different kinds of bees in Minnesota um, that are supposed to be more hygienic to these mites so that they are able to kill them off and kind of clean out the hive themselves. So where do these honeybees pick up the mites? Well, they usually get them at the, all the areas that bees congregate in. So at the heads of flowers where all these bees are coming in to get their pollen. Um, a lot of times the, the mites will hop off and then they'll hop onto another bee. So they're just being passed all the time. So it is pretty much impossible to never have a mite on any of your bees. So knowing all that, let's put in an actionable plan on how to keep your bees healthy. First, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're testing your bees once a month throughout the bee season. So first thing, as soon as you can in the spring, you need to go out there and you need to test your bees. See what that mite load is. You wanna make sure that they are set up to have a successful summer. This is when they're gonna start rearing all of their brood so you need to make sure that there's no mites spreading viruses, there's no mites sucking all of the energy out of them because they need to be healthy and strong going into the summer. So how do you test them? Um, there are two ways that I know of that work the best and that is the alcohol wash or a sticky board test. I personally like using an alcohol wash. Um, you're just gonna do this by getting a half a cup of bees. They say this should be around 300 bees or so but you're gonna get a half a cup of bees and then get a little contraption. Um, they have a mite checker, like little container that you can use. Um, it pretty much has a cup in the inside that has a bunch of little holes and then that is stuck inside a larger cup. But you're going to take your bees and you're going to put them in this cup and you're gonna pour alcohol in it and then you're gonna put the cap on and you're just gonna shake it for about 60 seconds. And what happens is when you do that, the alcohol is going to take those mites and make them come off of the bees. And all those mites are gonna come through the holes of that little inner cup and it's gonna, they're gonna fall into the bottom of that other cup that's there. So when you take it and you put it up to the sunlight, you're gonna be able to see these little tiny dots um, they kind of look like little orange saucers and you're going to count to see how many that you have. If you see nine or more mites, you absolutely need to treat your bees. Personally, I don't like seeing more than around five mites um, that I'm going to say I I'm just going to treat them right now because I don't want it to get out of hand because it's already going to start trending that way anyways. At nine mites, um, that should be around a 3% mite load. That's usually what they say is like the, the spot, the threshold that you should start treating your bees. Um, but like I said, I don't like seeing mine that high. I don't want it to get out of hand. So now that we know how to test our bees, how do we treat our bees for mites? First, I'm gonna talk about what I like using the most and that is formic acid. It's usually sold under the name formic pro or mite away, like the mite away quick strips. This is a natural organic compound. So this is, this is not some like terrible chemical that you're putting on your bees. It is an, it is an organic acid that you are using, so it's okay to use. But there are some rules when using it. You absolutely have to make sure that your outside temperatures are going to be 50 to 85 degrees, no lower and no higher. Absolutely, 
for the for that time period. Um, they usually say if you have like a three to five day window um, when you're going to have temps in that range, then it will be okay because that's when the formic pro or the formic acid is gassing off the most. Um, but I have heard of some beekeepers having a lot of issues because they did not follow those guidelines and they put those strips on when it was maybe 90 degrees outside. This is a huge no-no. Don't do that. You don't want to lose your bees. But the cool thing about it is there are no residues in the wax or the honey. So you can still put this on when you do have your honey supers on. You don't have to worry about it being in your honey because it's not going to go in there. So overall, that is why I really like using that as a treatment. But it is wise to rotate your treatment so that your mites do not become resistant to what you're using. So that being said, other natural treatments are thymol, also sold as Apigard, or you can also use oxalic acid, which is usually sold as Hopgard. Um, those are just other natural compounds, natural organic compounds that you can use in your hive that will kill off the mites. There is one very common synthetic treatment that you can use, and that is called Apivar. I've never personally used it yet. Um, I mean, maybe if my mites were really out of hand, then I will use Apivar. But for right now, I'm just gonna stick to the natural compounds like the Formic Pro or the Oxalic Acid. And another tip um, that I like using is if you don't have a ton of beehives, it's really expensive to do if you're trying to scale up and have tons and tons of beehives. Um, but if you're just like a normal backyard beekeeper, then you could also use screened in bottom or screened bottom boards. So what happens is when the bees kind of like shake and the, the mites fall off, the mites will fall down and they'll fall through this screened bottom board and they won't be able to get crawl back up. So they're gonna, as soon as they fall off, they're gonna be stuck out of the hive and they're gonna die down there. Also, if you're wanting to do the sticky board test, then you're gonna need screened in body board, screened in bottom boards <laughs> to do this. But okay, my most important tip for you that I want you to take away from this video is make sure you treat your bees by the middle of August. It is absolutely crucial. If you want your bees to make it through the winter time, they need to be healthy. This is when, this is right before they start rearing their winter bees. So in order for your colony to survive the winter, they're gonna need to be healthy. They need to be at the lowest mite load possible. They can't have any viruses. They need to be able to grow as they naturally would. And because of the life cycle of the mite versus the bee, they are bees are the most vulnerable in the winter time. This is when the bee population is going down, but the mite population is going up. So again, it's absolutely crucial to have the lowest mite load possible going into winter time. I'm gonna be honest, usually, it, unless I literally do not find any mites in my tests, then I am treating my bees because I need to be sure that there are not any mites in my hive. But all right, that is it. If you have any other questions on how to feed your bees in the spring, what you should be looking for in the springtime, how to treat small hive beetles, any other questions that you might have, I have videos coming out every single week and I've already put out some videos about those topics. So if you wanna learn more, click on that notification bell so that you are notified every single time I post a video so that I can help you out. Go have fun with your bees today, guys.